Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we're building this dedicated bench for tapping using an old milling head that I got off of a lathe, and I got some little improvements on here that are gonna really improve my workflow. Check it out. A quick overview before we get started. This right here is a three quarter horsepower R8 spindle milling head that actually was from my Bolton lathe back there. Now this has been sitting around for a while. What's nice about it is that it's a four speed gear driven head. So my goal was to bolt this to the bench and give myself an R8 spindle that I could use my various Tapmatic and other branded tapping heads in order to tap metal really efficiently and quickly. I also decided to put my lead screw tapper, which is another small tapping machine on here, so I can mount the controls into the bottom. Let's get into making this and stay tuned to the end and you can see me test out these tapping heads. Okay, so starting out, I drew a little quick sketch on my welding table with a soapstone, just kind of giving me dimensions as to where I could fit this, how much room I had, and how much book butcher block top that I had. I have an old piece of countertop that's actually from my parents' kitchen from years and years and years ago that I've been holding on to, and it's going to be perfect for this. I want something that's made out of wood. It's a little more forgiving in case I drop a tap or drop any tools on it. They won't chip. I'm using two by two tubing here with a 16th inch thick wall um, and right now I'm clamping it up with these awesome corner clamps from Ollie Iron. Brandon hit me up and sent me these to try out. They are absolutely going to change the way that I work in my metal shop. They make jigging things up really really quick and easy and uh, I checked them all. He sent me six. I checked all six of them for square. They were all dead nuts perfect so I'm really excited to Get these integrated into my shop check him out there'll be links down below to uh, purchase these they're pretty reasonable too anyway welding this thing up just making everything nice and square making sure my legs are nice and square the bench itself doesn't necessarily have to be uh, heavy i just wanted to use the two by two sort of for its dimension um, to give it that much more stability so there wouldn't be any flex the milling head that I'm going to be using is pretty heavy. It probably weighs about 150 pounds on its own. And then there'll be other little components added to it. The butcher block's not light. So all in all, it will be a pretty heavy duty piece once it's done. I'm just making sure that everything is nice and square and welding it all up, giving really nice full beads to make sure that everything stays very strong and doesn't flex around. Um, the corner clamps and these corner guides really come in handy when doing a leg like this. You can square it from both sides and you know that you're going to be perfectly accurate and when you stand this thing up as long as all your legs are the same length it's not going to wobble or rock. In my shop unfortunately it doesn't matter what I do because the floor is so far out of level it's always going to rock or move in some way but that's beside the point. I wanted to add a shelf on the bottom, so I'm using some three-quarter by three-quarter angle and just tacking it to the sides. I'm going to just lay a piece of MDF in there, and that's going to give me a little spot to put some of my sheet metal cutting tools. I didn't want to connect the sides. I really didn't have a lot of this material, so this was sufficient in order to just kind of get me, get me together um, and keep this thing being able to hold a piece of MDF there. Did a little bit of grinding just to make sure the top sat nice and flat. And then I'll go ahead and cut down the butcher block on the table saw. This is a maple butcher block. It is an inch and a half thick. It's extremely strong stuff. It's very, very dense. It even bogged down the saw stop a little bit because it did have a slight bow in it. And then I'm just cutting up some MDF for the shelves. I'm drilling some quarter inch holes through the tubing and I'm going to be using some three inch decking screws to make sure this thing corrects itself and gets a little bit of that warp out of there and stays really nicely onto the steel top. The decking screws shoot right into this maple and without splitting it, which is really nice. They have kind of a split point so they almost drill themselves into the wood as they go so I don't have to pre-drill. So 
So moving this thing into place in my little machine shop, I've got my granite surface plate on the left, another sort of tapping bench with my hardness tester and stuff on it behind it, and you know, the mill and the lathe are kicking around. So this is kind of the heart of this whole thing. This has got to go up onto here, and this is an R8 taper um, milling head. So I want to bolt this to the table right over here so that I can use my tapping heads on it. And it's heavy, let me tell you. Okay, so this is a four speed R8 three quarter horsepower milling head. Now this actually belongs on the Bolton lathe that uh, you've seen in some of my videos. Now it's unique in that it's an independent R8 milling head, which is awesome. Now it's obviously a little banged up as you can see. Um, this machine was dropped, I believe, before I got my hands on it. So that's why I think it's in such rough shape, but it should work. Now I need to kind of get a look over here at the wiring and try and figure out how to get it to switch properly. And then what I want to do is drill four holes in the table and bolt this directly to the table about here so that I can use it over here. So I spent some time trying to rewire the motor. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw the saga that unfolded on my story, just trying to get the thing to run. Um, but with that done, I took a piece of paper and I traced out the bolt pattern and the outline of the base onto just some white computer paper. And I'm just making sure to lay it out properly so I don't hit that steel bar that's underneath the butcher block top. Once I have an idea of where I want it to go, measure everything out, make sure it's nice and centered, I grab a knife and I just mark out the center of the holes that I traced and then using a 3 8 inch drill bit I just drill right through the maple top and I'm kind of wiggling the drill a little bit as I go to, to open up the holes so they're not exactly 3 inch. The bolts are 3 8 and I don't want them to be too too tight um, but with that done I can tip the milling head up and make sure that it's going to sit in place correctly. I cut a block of wood and put it underneath the spindle so that it wouldn't tip forward. This thing is super, super top heavy. It's cast iron and that motor is really, really heavy. So it was a little precarious to stand it up by myself and I really didn't want it to fall and get any more damage than it already was. Once I dropped the bolts in there though, it uh, firmed up really quickly and luckily the bolt holes were all good. I went ahead and I added a fender washer and a locking nut on the bottom so that everything would stay nice and tightly in place. And once I use the thing a little bit, I'm going to go back and just retighten all the hardware, make sure it hasn't loosened up or flexed over time from the vibration that the machine itself is creating when the motor's running. And you can see how I have to keep shimming the bottom of the table because the floor is super uneven. No matter what I do, I can never get lucky with that. Just making sure that I have good motion and travel, checking everything, making sure that the R8 spindle and the R8 collets don't put me too close to the table with the size of these milling heads. They can be a little large, especially the 90X that I'm gonna be using. What's nice about this is the gears that allow you to change the speed without losing any torque. That's a big perk for using this milling head. Now the other component that I wanna to add to this table is a Millman lead screw tapping machine. Now I'm gonna talk about this in another video on its own, but basically what this is, this is an automatic tapping machine that automatically goes down and up with the use of pedals, and it is set to a specific screw pitch. So if you're um, tapping a 172 screw, you would use the correct gears to get it to pitch a 72 threads per inch. So it's a very specific machine for doing smaller, more sensitive tapping. They're really cool. I picked this one up at an auction and I'm very excited to do a video kind of explaining it because what I've found is that a lot of people have never heard of them. Now what you're seeing me do here is just make a quick little shelf using some angle 
and some masonite to just get a place for the control box for the millman tapping machine to rest. Now the control box tells the machine when to go up and when to go back down, so it's important that it's near the machine, but at the same time, I don't want it taking up valuable real estate on top of the bench. I also made sure to make this shelf not all the way as deep as the top. I left some room back there so I can drop cables and do whatever I need to do. And you can hear that transformer kind of buzzing. It's something that I want to repair on this machine. And I just go ahead and grab a paint marker and mark the up and down buttons because I always get confused um, when I'm using this little thing. It's really a great machine for like a knife maker doing small taps like the stuff that I do like 080, 172, and 256. Um, the foot pedals and the whole machine has really old kind of crusty wires so I want to make sure I don't put too much strain on them. So I'm just taking a little bit of hot glue and hot gluing these foot pedals down to a board so when I'm ready to use the machine I can just drop it down and get to using it. So when I'm working with these tapping heads, um, I uh, obviously I have to change the taps a lot and it can be a little cumbersome. So what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill a hole in the bench right here so that when I need to work on these, I can just drop this into the hole, do what I have to do with my wrenches. And since I have these all set up on an R8 collet, if I drill a one inch hole in the bench, this will slip right into it and hold it nice and tight and I can change out all these without having to grab them anything else and if I put it right over here on the corner it won't be in my way. Oh, perfect. So now when I need to work on these, I can just drop them in, do what I need to do to the top, and it'll work with all of my tooling for this. Even the small one, because I'm using an RA collet, I can just drop that in there, drop that in there, do what I gotta do, and that's it. Pretty cool. Okay, now that I've got the whole thing built out, everything is done, I wanted to do some test pieces. So here is a piece of 3 8 mild steel plate. I've got four different um, size holes drilled in it. I've got a number seven, which is for a quarter 20, a number 35, which is for a 6 32, a 5 16, which is for a 3 8 16, and an 11 16, which is for a three quarter 16 uh, thread. So these four holes represent the four different size tapping heads that I have. And just gonna run this thing through the paces and see how it does on these four sizes. So we'll start with the smallest size. We're gonna start with the number 35 holes. And this is a 632 tap in a Tapmatic SPD3 tapping head. So you can see how easily it taps those little holes. Let's move up to the number seven and tap these quarter 20s. So this is a Supreme tapping head. Uh, it's not a Tapmatic. Now this automatically reduces the speed of the spindle. I have the spindle on the milling head at 240 RPMs. I'm gonna turn it up to 600 RPMs just because this already reduces it so much. 
I want to actually see if I can tap this a little bit faster. Again, super easy. The machine has plenty of torque and you can see, similar to the Tapmatics, this thing automatically reverses itself as I lift it up. Let's move up to the 3 8 Now you'll see me bolting this uh, little piece on. Now, in order for these Tapmatic heads to work, this little arm has to be stopped um, on the reverse rotation. Now, Tapmatic's very explicit in that they don't want you to extend these arms. A lot of times you'll see guys bolt stuff to them. Um, I just, to try and preserve the quality of these, I like to just bolt something or clamp something to my workpiece so that I don't wind up putting too much torque on this bar and potentially breaking something. Now again, this is 3 8 plate and this is a 3 8 16 tap and I'm running at 240 RPMs. Uh, yeah. Well, the down worked, <laughs> but it looks like my collet wasn't tight enough. And I also really should have had a better grab on my, uh, on my vice, it seems. Okay, let's try that again. I, uh, I closed up on the collet a lot better. I didn't have it very tight, so that must have been my problem. Now uh, we should be good. And I think for this, get a clamp onto my vise so it can't go anywhere. So the tapping oil I'm using is an Ometa high tap tapping oil that was sent to me by Ometa to try out um, to Instagram. This stuff has been fantastic. I've been using it as a cutting oil for drilling and it's a tapping oil. Um, the stuff is awesome. I have not broken the tap yet. Everything seems to be staying super sharp. I'm going to put some links below where you can check them out and get some more information on their products. Okay, so I did 632, quarter 20, and 3 8 16, no problem. But this is the real test. This is 3 quarter... 16 thread. Um, this is the biggest size tap that I have and it's going to require the biggest tapping head that I have Which is this monster. This is the Tapmatic 90x which will go up to an inch and an eighth So let's get this chucked up and try this three-quarter inch tap You can see just how big the Tapmatic 90X is in comparison to a Tapmatic 50X, which is a pretty good sized tapping head that'll do up to up to a half inch. Now the 90X will do from half inch to inch and one eighth. So let's give it a shot. Nice. So you can see in there, hopefully this translates on camera, I've got nice sharp threads in all these holes and I think the true testament to the success of this is the fact that I can tap a 3 quarter 16 hole in 3 eighths plate in all of like 2 or 3 seconds. Overall I'm super happy with how this thing came out. All right, thank you so much for watching. This was a good little project. Um, I know very straightforward in terms of just building a metal bench, but I think 
the concept of putting the milling head from my lathe on this was something that I'd actually never seen before and it's actually gonna work out great for me. Having the R8 spindle, being able to switch between my tapping heads really quickly um, is gonna be fantastic. I definitely need to work on some way to keep that vise down and I'm gonna get there for sure. I know I didn't mention and didn't work with this little lead screw tapper at all in this video. I wanna do its own sort of dedicated video talking about this because a lot of people have never heard of these and it's a super versatile tool. So if you wanna see that, leave me a comment down below. I wanna show the way this thing taps in titanium and other materials uh, on the smaller tap size really, really well and efficiently. So again, super happy to have this thing. It's really gonna change my workflow and expect to see this table in a bunch of videos moving forward. If you like what you saw, you should follow me on Instagram, at Make Everything Shop. I post every day on my story when I'm working on a project like this. I had a whole bunch of issues with the electrical on the motor for the milling head, and I worked through them all on my story. I got a lot of great feedback, and I posted a lot about this project as I went. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, if you have anybody that you think would be interested in seeing something like this. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content from the shop, building stuff, making tools, all that sorts of stuff. Again, I am Chris Zett from Make Everything. I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.